So, uh, this video, I'm going to be talking about my experience working on God of War Ragnarok. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I voiced the character Ratatoskr, uh in the game. And not only that, but uh, I actually uh, wrote a lot of his dialogue, developed the character, did motion capture. It was a whole thing. Uh, and it's, you know, probably one of the craziest things I've gotten to do in my career, because you usually don't get that much creative input into a character you play. So I just figured I'd go into the whole, how everything went down. Way before Ragnarok was even announced, I had a friend who uh, was a writer uh, at Sony Santa Monica, and he was like, hey, they, they like would be interested in having you come in for like a meeting. Um, and I was like, oh, sure. I, I, don't, I didn't know what to expect. I wanna say September, 2019. So I go over to the studio uh, and it's uh, like the writers uh, and uh, the director of the game. So I walk in, I just sit down at the sort of meeting room table and then Eric, the director uh, was like, so I'm sure you can guess why you're here. And I was like, I have no idea. And then he sort of gestured, it was like a meeting room and there was like a God of War like background on the projector. And I was like, oh, 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 that, the, I, okay, I guess you're doing a second one, huh? And he's like, yup, uh, and we would like you to play a character, but also write for the character. And I was like, are you sure? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, of, of course my answer was yes, but I was like, I, if, if, sure, uh, just what is the character like? Um... And so uh, they had actually concept art uh, of Ratatoskr, uh, so I knew what he looked like. And at the time, they also knew that they were going to have him have multiple personalities. So that, like, uh, for those of you who haven't played the game, uh, Ratatoskr, uh can, like, sort of project these uh, spectral versions of himself. And they were kind of going for, like, yeah, it's going to be, like, uh, Inside Out-esque, right? Like, we want to have, you know... Since Ratatoskr, a version of him, was in the first game, we're like, all right, this time it's the real Ratatoskr, and the the one you met in the first game is sort of like one of his spectral squirrels. I think they were even, they were like debating like, oh, do we get like different actors for each one or what? And then I, I was told in conversation, they were like, well, I think we want someone who can play all of them in different ways so that it still feels like the same character, but the personalities feel distinct enough. And then I think it was maybe Eric or somebody was like, you know, kind of like uh, uh, that guy in YouTube, uh, you know, the way he plays characters and skits, you know, just very different characters. And then uh, my friend was like, well, I, I know him. Do you want to meet with him? Uh, and so that's how I believe it came about was they were like, we want to find someone who can sort of play these characters, very different characters and even, you know, help us find the, the voices for them. Uh, which was very flattering. You know, I was like, oh, shit. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if you think I'm up to the task, uh, I, I will gladly do it. That was the initial meeting, and then I didn't I didn't actually hear anything for a while. And for a while, I was like, oh, did they, like, change their mind? Like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. But eventually, I was contacted. This was during COVID times. We're going to get started, and we want to actually, like, onboard you as a writer. Uh, and so I went through orientation i got a company email like i basically oh you know temporary you know staff i guess uh, on the project which is kind of crazy this was before any sort of acting at all and this was my first foray into any kind of video game writing like i had no experience whatsoever uh so i will say i was extremely grateful for uh the guidance of the writers like uh uh, I mainly worked with uh, Rich, Rich Gobert, um, and he was just, like, invaluable uh, in helping me out. It was interesting because when I originally met with the, about the project, I was told, oh, you'd be, like, kind of co-writing it with uh, another writer. And then uh, I kind of found out as I started, oh, actually, that writer, I think, was busy and had to leave the project for a bit, so it's all you. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, sure. Uh, I'll do my best. Um, and so there had been some some writing already done for the character. But none of this is set in stone. And ultimately, we want to actually see what kind of character do you want to play? Or do you think would be interesting to play? And sort of like unprecedented creative control. They were like, we're going to let you uh, come up with the 
not only Reddit Hosker's personality and backstory and voice, but you get to come up with, we already know Bitter Squirrel is going to be one, uh, but the other ones, you get to decide uh, what they are, what voices, just give us some ideas and we'll, and we'll see what we like. And I was like, okay, uh, sure. So, uh, the original Ratatosker, like the main squirrel that they had, it was, it was good stuff, but it was like, kind of like, um, very like, uh, snarky, kind of, um, like Rocket Raccoon-esque. When I had been thinking about this character and, um, stuff and kind of like, why would this character project these squirrels and this or that. You see a lot of like, uh, you know, snarky, like, you know, sassy animal characters, but I was like, you know, and I gave them this pitch. I was like, okay, my envision, my vision of what the main Ratatosker is like, he, I almost described him as like, he's like a car salesman. Like, uh, you know, definitely doesn't like, uh, put his true emotions out front very like oh hello it's very nice to meet you you know this kind of vibe and then sort of the uh emotions that he projects out of himself he views as like inconveniences so whether it's bitterness or anxiety you know which is one of the ones you know i was like okay that could be like an interesting angle right because why does this character project these emotions well i think a lot of us you know go man i wish i could just pluck out my anxiety i wish i could just pluck out my bitterness and just free myself of it. Uh, and I was like, that could be an interesting angle. So in the game, there's bitter, anxious, uh, perfectionist, and arrogant. Uh, and so I, I pitched like a couple, like beyond that, but the, I were like, okay, these are some possible ideas. If we're going with this concept, here are some possible, you know, emotions. Uh, and, and I recorded myself doing voice, voice versions of each one. And then they picked the ones that they liked. That was kind of like how it came about was the sort of main personality and the sub personalities. I was like, you know, oh, you know, in my mind, Ratatosker was like a weak squirrel who the world tree sort of gave this, these powers, these, this gift to. Uh, so he feels indebted to the tree, you know? It was crazy. It was crazy how much uh, freedom they gave me uh, to sort of completely write the character as I thought would, would be interesting. That was how we developed him and the uh, other personalities. Um, the actual writing process was really interesting. They had some exi existing scripts and then um, they would have, uh, you know, the writers like sort of write like a basic framework of what the scene was, what they needed. Uh, because when you, when you do game writing, a lot of it is like objective based. Like, well, you need to, uh, deliver or when they deliver this item you need to say something or this scene needs to contain these beats uh for gameplay or story reasons so it's like i would receive usually all right we've got like a basic framework of what this scene is but then go ahead and rewrite it and so i not only got to write ratatoskar's dialogue but i also got to write kratos's responses it's kind of fun writing from kratos's perspective because he's so stoic so you know uh, how does he react to a, you know, a kind of more out there squirrel character? Uh, it was a fun challenge, actually. Several weeks of just uh, uh, submitting drafts, having meetings about them, you know, uh, workshopping stuff. Uh, and it was a really fun process. I, I got a lot out of it. And uh, again, I owe so much to Eric and Rich and uh, all the, and the writers, you know, for, you know, because they, you know, helped me out so much. I did all that, uh, and then I was done with the writing, and then I think there was like a bit of a pause. And then I had to uh, do the first motion capture. He is, there's only one motion, cap motion capture scene for him, uh, and it's when Kratos meets him. That entire scene, actually, is all intact from my script, which was kind of crazy. Because like the rest of the game, um, they added a lot of stuff, and they like changed stuff here and there. A lot, all great stuff. Like, you know, they, they did an amazing job. Uh, but that first scene with him uh, is exactly how I wrote it. I, you know, went to, uh, on set, and uh, it was pretty nerve-wracking, because for voiceover, um, you don't have to memorize anything unless you're doing, like, motion capture like this. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm very uh, um, spoiled by that. I love not having to memorize stuff. So when I had to do this or work on Blackberry or stuff where you have to memorize a lot of stuff, uh, or Anime Crimes Division, 
uh, it can be pretty nerve wracking because um, you're just like, I don't want to fuck it up. And so uh, it was just me in this trailer just like going over lines, going over lines, and then me going, why the fuck did I write so many lines for this character? <laughs> why did I write so many, so much dialogue for him? That day, a bunch of the actors were there because uh, they were they were doing different scenes that day. Uh, Danielle, who plays Freya, Mimir's actor, uh, Alistair Duncan, and uh, the scene got a very good reaction. Like um, they, they, even the actors who weren't in the scene, like really, you know, enjoyed it. And of course, Chris Judd was there, and he's you know a sweetheart. But that felt good. You know, it's like oh okay, you know. Uh, Clearly, the, the scene is working for people, even if they've, they've never even heard the scene before or whatever. And then it was a lot of just waiting in the trailer and internally just went, oh, all right, let's, let's 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 do a good job. The actual process of doing motion capture, you know, this is my only time uh, doing it. Uh, you know, you, you you put on the suit, they scan you, and they do a lot of you do a lot of ex like little stretches and movements and stuff, and you see a little guy, you know, doing it pretty interesting we got to the actual shooting of the scene and this was really interesting Alistair was on he was on the side doing the Mimir lines but it was Chris and then uh, I believe a stand-in for Atreus uh, and then uh, a puppeteer for uh, Ratatoskr I was on the side like off stage looking at them and I had in but behind me sort of like a, uh, a stage that I could sit on and I had bars in front of me that I could climb, like climb or motion climb. What I had to do was, you know, I'm watching the scene in front of me. The squirrel is being like, you know, jumped onto onto Kratos's back or crawling here or jumping on here and sitting in, you know, Atreus's arms or whatever. And I have to, in real time, mimic do my lines and mimic the movements. So if if um, Ratatoskr is climbing, I'm kind of like climbing on the bars in front like while standing. And when I sit down, uh, you know, I take a seat. And you know, I also had a piece of hard candy for when he, um, you know, cleans up the seed in his mouth. So it was like, oh, this is very interesting. I have to pretend I'm the squirrel, but I'm seeing the squirrel, but I'm doing I'm miming the from the squirrel's perspective. It was really interesting. A tangible tree. That delectable aroma. Could it be? Pardon the intrusion. <laughs> so this was a particularly challenging setup. I don't know which one of you ah, wants to yes. take a stab at a... Amber red. Yeah, you can start it off. I'm going to start it off, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or Bruno, you want to talk about like what... And of course, I want to say like, you know, the animators did an amazing job with him. Like, I never want to imply, oh yes, it's all my motion capture. No, no, like the animators, like, they do just so much amazing work with making him look good and, you know, believable and stuff. But just as an acting exercise, it was really fun. It was a really fun uh, experience to do that kind of thing. And yeah, I think uh, it, it went really well. Chris was really nice. Uh, everyone was super nice. Uh, and that was uh, my, my motion capture day. Uh, the rest of it was recorded uh, in a studio, like a voiceover studio. Uh, this was like a, a while later too. A lot of people asking about the chime scene where he yells. I see you're deliberately attempting to push me into some sort of emotional outburst, aren't you? Well, I'm not so easily swayed, my good man. Stop with the stupid chime! Oh, oh dear. I'm sorry. I don't know where that came from. Uh, I didn't write that line. That line is all credit to the writers. So I haven't actually played the game yet. <laughs> like, I need to. I just haven't played it yet. But I've looked up videos. I'm like, oh, a lot of my stuff is actually in there still. Quite a bit of it. And uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm very proud of. I really like uh, Kratos's like, sort of conversation with anxiety. Uh, I think it's actually, I, I you know, I, I just like how that scene turned out. But I was also really impressed by, like, all the great stuff the writers, you know, added uh, after I left, like, it's, they really, like, captured exactly how I pictured the character talking. We're on the same page, like, it, it's really great work. The VO director was also very kind, and she, because Rada Tosca has a lot of long, you know, passages of dialogue, she's like, I think she said something, you should take teach a class on doing long monologues, because that's not an easy thing to do naturally. And I was like, oh, uh, well, uh, Thank you. I, I, I didn't really think about it, but uh, it's really interesting, um, kind of like with writing and performing video game dialogue, the actor's impulse is to take your time with it and stretch, not stretch things out, but, you know, take your time. 
And when you're writing lines and or performing lines, oftentimes it's like, well, we kind of need to sh cut this or shorten this because uh, a lot of gamers are not patient. A lot of gamers are just going to go skip, 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 skip. It's also really interesting writing like, you know, sort of like buckets of prompts. So it's like, hey, uh, they're depositing the leaned worms. You got to give us like eight response, write eight responses of things for the character to say each time they deposit it. Or, oh, you know, they're hitting the chime. Give us like write six responses. It's very creatively fun, actually, but a little challenging to go, okay, how can I make eight interesting lines about the same action uh, in character? So again, just a really, I have a lot of respect. I mean, I did before, but I have even more respect for uh, video game writing and just like, it's 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 very, uh, they, they do masterful stuff. Uh, with especially with like some like strict limitations of what you need to do. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, it it was one of the most creatively rewarding experiences of my career. I I was I don't expect or anticipate to have this much creative control over a character like this, at least for like a very long time, if ever again. Uh, so I'm extremely thankful uh, to everyone. Uh, Sony Santa Monica for giving me the opportunity and chance to do something like this. Uh, I never dreamed in a million years I would be asked to write and perform in a God of War game. Uh, you know, I played the God of War trilogy as a kid and loved it, and so uh, uh, it, was a, it was a very, I was extremely grateful for the experience, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, Red Atosker in the game, because uh, it was really fun to to create and uh, play them. All right. Peace.